Hello everybody, it's time for another installment on my pepper series. And today I'm not going to be talking about the peppers that I'm growing, I'm going to be talking about peppers in general, such as uh, history and you know what types of peppers there are and uh, just a little bit of information on peppers. So um, Now basically this is a uh, sort of a high school type of report on peppers. Um, you know, I, I'm not an expert, so just to let you know. So anyway, I will get started. Uh, the first evidence of cultivation of capsicum annuum, uh, that's the pepper that includes bell peppers, cayenne peppers, jalapenos, etc. Uh, the first evidence uh, stretches back 7,000 years and domestication is thought to have occurred around 6,000 years ago and there's direct evidence 3,000 years ago um, they've, uh, there was some pottery that was found in Puebla from the Puebla and Oaxaca people that contained peppers seeds and it's thought to be the first domesticated plant in Central America. Mexico and Central America is thought to be the origin of Capsicum annuum. So this area right here, Oaxaca, Guatemala, right in there, that's where the wild ancestral Capsicum annuum was domesticated. Uh, there's another variety in South America called Capsicum frutescens, and that was domesticated in northern Brazil. Now this went on for quite a while. Uh, I don't really know what the Indians used them for. I would, you know, it either have to be for medicinal or uh, for food. I'm not sure, but. Um, obviously we know about Columbus. Oh, this by the way, coming up here, is what the wild capsicum annuum looks like. It's quite a striking difference compared to what we see. Basically this is the ancestor of your giant bell pepper you get in the grocery store. They look like this. So getting back to Columbus, uh, in the 1500s, um, he and his men were on a quest to discover new spices. And when they discovered these peppers, the small ones I just showed you, um, Columbus termed them peppers because it reminded him of the spiciness of the black pepper. So that's, peppers got their name from black pepper. Okay, so Columbus brought these peppers back to Europe. Columbus and his men brought these peppers back to Europe. And there they were cultivated as an ornamental shrub. And it wasn't until some monks in Spain got a hold of them and they liked the flavor of them and decided to uh, start cultivating them as a spice and um, started breeding them for uh, different characteristics and varieties. So the origin of most a lot of our uh, peppers came from monks in Spain. Now what kind of a plant is the pepper. Well it's a member of the nightshade family and the nightshade family includes this plant right here it's called the wild four o'clock it grows wild where I live it also includes the potato look at the similarity in the flowers the potato is a nightshade and eggplant is a member of the nightshade tomatillo 
same thing, remember the nightshade? Tomatoes, probably the most famous member of the nightshade. And I've got two wild types of nightshade growing right in my yard, in the backyard. Uh, this one is called Enchanter's Nightshade and the fruit looks different and if you get a close-up on the flowers you would see that they look they have that same similar look and this one is the bittersweet nightshade now look at how the similarity between these and a tomato uh, flower it's incredible it looks just like it so this is the flower of the bittersweet nightshade and this is the fruit of the bittersweet nightshade looks pretty tomato like doesn't it it's amazing the similarity so I just wanted to point out to you what kind of plant nightshade is or what kind of plant peppers are okay so there are five domesticated types of capsicum we'll start out with capsicum annuum that's the one that I'm kinda of concentrating on today that includes the bell peppers the cayenne style peppers jalapenos and chili peppers all of those peppers originated from those tiny little peppers those wild type peppers I showed you before amazing human beings are responsible for that next we have the capsicum chinense that first one was fatali this one's buchalokia this is Jamaican hot chocolate I've said it a million times, my favorite. Habanero. And here we got uh, Scotch Bonnet Habanero, the kind that you find in your grocery store. So those belong to the ca uh, Capsicum Chinense family. There's other families too that we've domesticated. We've domesticated five types. This is Capsicum Bacatum. Capsicum fruticens and Capsicum pubicens. I hope I'm saying those names right. You can correct me if I'm wrong. The uh, Capsicum pubicens have black seeds, so they are a very different type of pepper. Now, I have a point to make about these peppers, and it involves evolution and just to throw out a fact for you only 40 percent of Americans believe evolution is true and that means that 60 percent of Americans do not accept a scientific fact to me that's sad now what kind of knowledge do you have to have to believe in evolution well, if you're anything like me, you have to be curious. You have to be interested. You have to be interested in science, geography, geology, biology, history. Uh, what kind of knowledge do you need to believe in creationism? None. The less knowledge you have, the better to believe in creationism. To me, there's just something wrong with that, and I need to point that out. Now, I've said this story in my last video, but I'm going to say it again. If evolution is true, and it is, that means there was no Adam and Eve. If there was no Adam and Eve, there was no original sin. And if there was no original sin, there was no need for Jesus to die a vicarious redemption for our sins. Evolution has proven 
that we are not derived from Adam and Eve. We are derived from older species of apes. The fossil record is almost nearly complete. It's a scientific fact. Look into it. Now, the point I want to make with peppers in evolution is that human beings created all these peppers you see right now by artificial selection. It took thousands of years to get to these peppers from those tiny little wild type peppers that I showed before. <clears throat> Human beings selected for different traits just like nature selects for different traits. Only when humans select for different traits it happens at a much faster pace. Natural evolution takes millions of years whereas human selection takes thousands of years. So the point here is that every single pepper we're seeing was not made by God. It was not put on this earth in this form. Humans selected it just like nature selects for traits. And that's a whole different subject, n natural selection. But artificial selection is a way to show how these traits can be selected. Now, uh, these peppers, like I said, that style pepper right there was taken to Europe where a lot of these varieties were created and then they were spread to China, Africa, India, and then eventually back to the Caribbean and South and North America. So the, I guess the whole point of this video is to say that this is proof of evolution right here. This proves evolution. It's artificial selection, but that's still evolution. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave your comments. And for God's sake, start looking into things for yourself. Don't believe what I say. Don't believe what anybody says. Find out things for yourself. Thank you.